Next year, uh, you know, we're thinking pretzels and coke for everybody, but you know, we have to live up to master standard. And it would be impossible if we turn to that from the beginning. I don't think we will have such a good event provided with all the food and everything that Hansel has provided for us, unless he does it again. So we're doing it right again. Jason, so do it again. So if anyone's interested, uh, there will be the event starts at two. Yeah. I'd like to say that the GCC steering committee asked for any volunteers who want to discuss the licensing issues. The GFDL. Yeah, that would be a good one. Please, we cede it to anyone who wants to encounter a solve it. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a good one to discuss. I guess. <laughs> so now, uh, we're just going to talk about uh, how, uh, the loop optimizations in GCC would have suffered some bit, right? should work on complete 
group nests. Usually you have group nests working, walking over multi-dimensional arrays, <coughs> doing work on a big chunk of memory. So we have also referred this to memory hierarchy optimization. So the idea is if you have a big loop over like one gigabyte of memory, you want to walk over this whole gigabyte of memory in small chunks so that the small chunk fits inside the cache. So if you have uh, memory redundancies across iterations that you can't easily remove in optimizers, then you want to hit the cache for all of these redundancies. And also if you divide these into small chunks, you can easily like do parallelization with different uh, CPUs or CPU cores that then won't conflict in the memory with the cache and you don't get uh, conflicts of writes or have to share a lot of the memory. Unfortunately, we don't have really high level group optimizations. We do have parallelization for quite some time. It even works on auto loops, so not only the innermost. We can do with in the graphite framework script mining blocking and interchange. In the past we could also do loop interchange, which is basically switching the indices. So doing the innermost loop is the outermost and the outermost is the innermost as I think one spec two thousand network where there was a trivial to this transform. So if it's if you can do this trivially, then it's usually the programmer's fault who solved the area was just running in memory in a different way. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we do this also with the uh, like profile framework. And there are some we would like to have, especially uh, Unroll and Jam, which is you unroll the outer loop and then fuse the inner loop copies. <coughs> just expose more redundancies um, across the different inner loops, which also would help some of SCAP 2006. And then we actually would like to have a working interchange. Uh, our current interchange is limited to the trivial case, so which usually not, it doesn't happen anymore because programmers were so well, if you have a trivial loop just iterate the indices in a way that is that you get continuous memory accesses. So usually you have more complicated situation where there's not a so-called perfect nest. So where there's also work done in the outer loop, which there's not really a way to shuffle it inside. But yeah, we can do interchange in that case right now. Um, and we have the issue that like for unrolling or complete nest unrolling. and this is 
20 passes later, you can still identify the same with the same identifier. This is useful or it's required if you want to do stuff like uh, have a pragma in a source to take one room as well, this one room, please unroll it. Uh, before that, it wasn't really possible without white room memory. So it's some magic building calls or new statement kinds to sort of mark this loop. But now you can attach information to the loop structure, which is just similar to when we have a basic block or edges. Uh, and track it throughout the compilation. And at the moment, we make a of this to preserve the hint on the upper bound of the number of iterations, which we, for example, can compute from value range propagation or also from, I think, optimistic analysis, down to RTL, where the, uh, the main unroller sits, which is really, uh, if it doesn't know how many times the loops iterate, it will just unroll uh, it eight times. But now we also have the information of the upper bound, so if the upper bound is two, it no, no longer unrolls it eight times, but only twice. Which actually saves quite uh, a bit of compile time. Which actually yes. So it's So cool. we have the not so high level loop optimizers, often like vectorization, it generates a prologue loop. To align the memory and then it has an epilogue loop to again uh, process the remaining iterations after the, those that do now uh, no longer fit inside a vector. And in the past, the RTL unrolled unroll the prologue loop eight times, the epilogue loop eight times, and the main vectorized loop eight times, and the fallback loop eight times. So there's a huge code load there, and it was really slow. And now it's a little bit better. But it's the only information we attach there right now is the upper bound on the group of operations. So, but now you can contribute pictures and stick other information to them and preserve it like until to your back end if you want to somehow mark it for special treatment. There's some issue with this because some CFG transforms make the loop no longer look like a loop, which means I think you have to work very hard to sort of update the loop structure. <coughs> or you say, well, I just remove the loop, or you don't do the transform anymore. So I have, uh, I think, implemented all of three kinds. The first one most easily breaks. Uh, the second one is easiest. As is so it's it's a trade-off. And at the moment we I think we don't have a mechanism in place that verifies if I would detect loops again, uh, would I now suddenly figure out what's 20 loops more that until that point magically got lost by some of these CFG transforms. <coughs> it's also Issue that we really have many 
some scalar cleanup would certainly be beneficial also to follow in group transforms. <coughs> I would of course be very costly to after each group transform group uh, around like three or four of these scalar cleanups we have. So this means our current static pass pipeline is very inflexible in this point. So if somebody has spare time, try to need to make our pass pipeline more dynamic, which will be also more fun to do. Uh, 
way it works for representing all the memory excesses and the dependencies. But we don't have any single trees to represent the iteration spaces or like ask questions on when do they match, how they relate to each other. I'm not aware of any data structure that exists in textbooks that we just implemented. But I'm also not a hologram physicist. So let's say that. Stop being a physicist. I think actually, yes, representation, representation of the information space, which actually is, is quite good in your eyes. It's exactly what you want to do. So I have a certain eye, and this is between 0 and 99, and what's that to do? So it's quite, quite natural to describe it. I don't know, so um, I have a 
use the typical five options because they usually don't help. They don't have a cost model of any sorts. So they usually make as much code slower and they make faster. Maybe we should make that by default. And the face can mess Well, we want to enable them and then the optimization is straight up. that 
at least at, on the outside, I've never actually looked at the inside. It, it's more of a infrastructure type. It was more of an infrastructure change to make things cool and to work on. But the end result is, is we don't, I don't care about the infrastructure until I actually have to work on it. I care about what it does. And I, we really need new, the new mode of optimizers and we have one to worry about real code rather than just putting the plumbing in place so that someday, hopefully, a future optimization will magically appear. I'm just skeptical and pragmatic. So that will mean, that will imply again that uh, the whole people uh, model the presentation will be built on our stuff. I mean, built on the GCC stuff. Rather, rather than being on something outside, no. that will be a piece of question. focused 